Do you see yourself and Pedro as two different people, or is it part of the same person? That's again. That's a very good question. I sometimes find I'm talking about Pedro as though he's a, he's a complete entity. I can't work out at what point Peter Brown becomes Pedro the Clown. He doesn't want to get the shoes on. He doesn't want to put the trousers on. I think it's somewhere between putting the wig on and the face paint. And at that point, I say goodbye to Peter and hello to Pedro. Don't know what happened to that hair. <laughs> you met me, darling. That's true. It all I fell took one out. Look at it, no. Yeah, he was about <laughs> five feet away from me, but uh, he looks closer on that picture. He was like you to me. Mm. Where was it that this photo was taken? Jerry, Jerry Cottle Circus in the Lion's Cage, um, at South Common Lincoln, in the nineteen eighties, late nineteen eighties. Uh, well, it was, I suppose it was back in uh, nineteen sixty six when I did my very first public appearance as a juggler. And it was with um, an amateur dramatic society in North Highcombe. Um, they, they wanted a speciality act, a speciality act such as it was, to fill in uh, an awkward um, scene change. The curtains had to come forward for about three minutes and they had to have something to fill that time. Uh, so in a moment of madness, I said, can, can I do my juggling? And they accepted the offer very, very readily, very quickly actually. And so a few weeks later there I was on the stage juggling for the first time in public. I was terrified. But from there I went through a series of uh, amateur dramatic shows, talent contests. Um, I won talent contest at Bottle Inn's Holiday Camp in Buffelli, 1972-ish. Um, I was lucky enough to get to the, the end of season final. And the other acts in that final of the competition included an unknown Cannon and Ball and an unknown Les Dennis. Um, they did quite well in the show business. Uh, even better than I did. <laughs> uh, but none of us won. None of us won the competition. Uh, and that was fun. And from there I went on to the circus. Um, the circus was terrific because it enabled me to uh, appear in towns and villages where I'd never have appeared otherwise. Um, at one time I was a member of the Lincoln Rotary Club and then um, through pressure of work I had to come out of it. It just wasn't time to, to belong anymore. Uh, but as, at the time I left the Echo, um, I think the Rotary Clubs of, of Lincoln, there's three of them, uh, thought, well, he hasn't been too much trouble to anyone while he's been at the Echo, let's give him something. And so this is about the highest honour they had, and I was like, was a drill to get that. Completely undeserved, so I snatched it off her hand straight away and said thank you. <laughs> and did you ever take us, is it round that? You actually go? got that for all the charity work that well, you do. Peter, yeah. you, you do. <laughs> Peter does about 30% of, of any of his work is for charity. And that's why he got this, because he's been doing that all of his life. Well, so he doesn't think it's because I haven't been in trouble for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Lynn Train Brown, and I'm Peter Brown's wife. We've been married for 10 years this September in 2012. Um, I met Peter while I was at university, and I was working in the catering department of uh, a country hall where. Peter was working as a clown and we got chatting and I made him a pizza uh, and I had no idea what he looked like that particular weekend. I'd only ever seen him as a clown but I really, really liked him. He said he was a really nice person and I just asked him out. I said, would you like to go out for a drink? And he agreed. And then that, when he, he met me after work, he'd washed off. That was the first time I got to see what he looked like. Two, three. Oh, that's nice. Sorry. I think what Peter's done with his life is really impressive. And I, I do really admire everything that he's achieved in his life. I think there's not many people who have had such a varied career in their lives. And he's managed to take so many different as aspects of aspects of his life that he enjoys and formulate a career out of them. He's done more since he's retired, allegedly, than he's, he did before, I think, and he's brought in so many new aspects. Well, the basic ones are the, the Indian clubs. I've got a couple of sets of Indian clubs. Uh, these are light because um, they're quite light, they're easy to manoeuvre. Uh, I should be using these a lot for the next couple of days because I'm in Delta tomorrow night. 
and then doing the fireworks flavour next night. And I can use these props for several hours on the top without them getting too heavy. I love these. I once went to, uh, to the, um, the Odeon and there was an advert on of a man juggling with beer cans and I thought it's a good trick, I've never seen that before. But I can't juggle with beer cans because it's bad doing it in front of children. So I use Coke cans instead. The beauty about these is you never quite know where they're going to land. They're, uh, they are empty the whole way. <laughs> and this is fun. If you ever want to alarm anyone when you're having a meal, just go like this. If you want to make it look really dangerous, you can use two of them. These are plastic, by the way. I call them my uh, plastic plates of peril. The basic things every, every juggler in the world juggles with are bean bags. The beauty about these is you can use them outdoors when it's quite windy and you still get away with it. Whoops! Is it indoors, of course? <laughs> That's the two up, one down. It must have a proper name, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, under the leg. The grab, I quite like the grab. I get very lazy if I'm not doing the show in the next coming two or three days. I, I should really practice more often. <laughs> uh, oh yes, what about these? I, I did use these the other night at um, Washington. I missed the blood on them. These aren't as difficult to use as a right look. Oh yes, without these. These are kind of nice. Now, if I happen to drop one of these on my toe, I do do a little dance accompanied by a little song. go too high, it's a glass ceiling. Okay, so you can just tell us a little bit about your time at the Echo, though, please. Yes, I had all 40 almost very happy years at the Lincolnshire Echo. Joined in 1966 as a, a senior reporter, only a senior reporter because of my vast age. And after a while I became a deputy news editor, and then latterly I soared to the depths of the leisure and entertainment editor. Uh, part of the, the job of Ledger and Entertainment's editor was to write something called the Gossiper page, which um, I did faithfully every day for over 20 years. I uh, got involved with Lincoln City Radio in uh, January last year. I was invited by uh, Malcolm Thompson to come along and be interviewed about my work as a clown. And at the end of that, a 20-minute interview became a 40-minute interview. Uh, Malcolm was kind enough to say, had he ever thought about becoming a radio presenter? Well, I hadn't, but I quickly did. Uh, they brought me back for some training. Uh, most of last year I spent shadowing other presenters, filling in when they couldn't make it. And at the start of this year, they kindly offered me my own show from 11 till 2 every Monday morning. And it's great fun. Uh, the great beauty of it is you're never quite sure from start to finish what's going to happen. <laughs> you sometimes get visitors coming in, which is nice, you have a chat to them on the air. Uh, you get a few calls from uh, listeners with record requests. Uh, you get a uh, changing situation on the traffic and travel, you have to keep an eye on. It is just great fun. Jazz and Dave there, and they're off to Margate, and good luck to them as well. Peter Brown here on Lincoln City Radio 103.6 FM and online. We've got now the lovely Kylie Minogue with one of her, her biggest hits and one of her early hits. I should be so lucky. Hate making up. It's the worst part of the job. Well, thanks for doing it for us. You're right. <laughs> I always feel I've achieved something when I've once got my makeup on. I wear a lot of makeup. The idea was originally when I grew old and grey, this would disguise all the cracks. 
So as you're putting on more and more makeup, do you actually feel yourself changing and getting more into yeah, the... Yeah, I don't know whether I mentioned this to you last time, but I can't work out where the point comes when I stop being Pedro and become Pedro. It's round about now, I think. I've got the, the, most of the costume on. The makeup's starting to come on. Yeah, I think this must be round about the point when I cease being Peter. That makeup can take as long a time as you've got. If I've got half an hour, I'll take half an hour. If I haven't, I won't. Is there any clowns in particular you take inspiration from? Like any famous clowns or clowns? Um, not so much clowns, but there, there was uh, a juggler that I saw when I was a lad, a juggler called Holly Gray. He, uh, he wasn't the best known juggler in the country, but he was, he was brilliant all round it. I saw him at his own circus, Lingamills, when I was a lad, and I think I was so impressed by what he did, uh, that sort of inspired me to try and do one or two other things. Uh, the clown that I met once, uh, Jack Jacko Fawcett, he was brilliant, and I admired him for a long time. I interviewed him through the Echo um, when he retired. I mean, I was alarmed the day I was doing a clown show at Skegness, and I found him in the audience. You know, there was nothing I could do, but he couldn't do so much better than me. He was very good. Right. The jacket's on. I think we're nearly there. I have my hair cut again, it's getting a bit long at the moment. <laughs> right, Jack is on and that's it. It's in that bag. God, do not tangle in the bag. Can you just explain to us uh, what's actually going on tonight then? Well, this is apparently an annual event in Bramston run by an organisation called Mr. Murderous Players. Isn't that a fantastic name? Mr. Murderous Players. And it's a glorified ghost walk. Uh, where you're guaranteed to find ghosts and ghoulies and witches and horrible creatures like clowns lurking round every corner. Where are you starting for the next one? Um, we start here. Start here again. Uh, back to the, it's like they can stand here looking all menacing and then while they're away, about five minutes, they erect the tent, the ring goes down, it's hard to understand it anyway, and then we've got the fine bracoles, that's the witches, doing their thing. Um, I do a shortened version of what you've just seen, where I can be really horrible. You'll have to do better than that. You don't want me to do this, do you? You don't want me to do this, do you? Yeah. Hang on! <laughs> if I drop it, I want you to wave your fists in the air and go boo as loud as you can. Will you do that? Yeah. We can have boos here, we've got a life. Right, here we go. Can you blow them out? Blow louder! It's not big enough, blow louder! onto the concrete, my hand went down and my face ended up covered with blood uh, and those two fingers were dislocated. Uh, for a long time, as Lynn said, they were pointing in different directions and the hospital sorted them out a bit. They're not quite the same as they should be now, but uh, there was a time when I thought I'd never juggle again. And it was at Christmas time, so I missed a lot of work, I couldn't do it. And uh, gradually started getting back up again. We used some 
light stuff first of all, the coke cans and, and the bean bags. Then gradually I plucked up courage to use the heavier clods and then finally bit into that kitchen. After a while I was okay, I could do it again. But it was a very anxious few months. Yeah, it was a very low point. It was. It? Yeah. it was when I when I realised how bad it was. Mm -hmm. it was one day I was having a lie in one weekend and it hadn't juggled for weeks and weeks since the accident. Yeah. It was just after yeah. Christmas and since the accident it hadn't juggled. He, I think you'd convinced yourself that he, mm. he couldn't juggle like again. Sword head, yes, it? and I heard you shouting at the cat. <laughs> Peter never raises his voice. He never shouts. He never loses his temper or gets moody. And that that day, I convinced him to start juggling. Mm. with the bean bags and just using the bean bags to squeeze them to start getting a bit of physiotherapy because yeah. you were going to physio but I don't think it, it was really good, no mm. but starting to squeeze the bean bags and then juggling mm. a little bit and building yeah. it up and yeah I think oh, you were scared okay. to try yeah, mm. yeah but uh, luckily we're okay now made a comeback yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I realised until then how important juggling was to me and I thought that perhaps I could never ever do it again. Mm. Yeah, it would have been, uh, it would have been a big thing to have lost. Thank God you didn't. Mm. That's why I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the bit this to me was enormous. Uh, it's when they made me an honorary freeman of the city. This doesn't mean I've got the freedom of the city. I can't, I can't, um, I can't graze cattle or on the South Common. Uh, I can't walk up the city high street uh, bearing sabres or guns or anything like that. But it, it does mean I'm an honorary free man of the city. And I was ever so thrilled with that. I went along to the Guild Hall, had a ceremony, the mayor presented me with it. It was a great day. And, and once again, it was an honour I didn't think I deserved because um, in recent times, uh, the Guild has only ever, I think, made two or three people honorary freemen in recent years, and then I was one of them. So again, it, it wasn't deserved, but I was ever so thrilled to get it. It's a hell of an honour. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. But what's it like to have such an eccentric dad? Um, well, it's pretty cool when we go to like fairs and that, because he knows all the people there, and I can usually go on free while he talks to the people who own them. Yeah. And um, so when we're at circuses and that, um, it's cool when he goes over to the like, the ringmaster and that after the show, and he has like a chat with them. He gets really excited about the circus skills and that, and. When he was doing his work at the brownies and um and at the, all the schools and that, um he always seemed really excited when he was going down there. It sort of feels quite normal now, but um I guess now that I've moved to a different school and people like sort of ask what um my dad and my mum do that and that <laughs> when I tell them he's a clown or um things like that, they sort of seem seem a bit shocked, but. It still feels a bit normal to me. I do have like quite a lot of circusy sort of skills and that. Um, I like working with like little children and that, and helping them out. I've got uh, my own little two cousins that I go and stay with for a bit sometimes, and I think I've got that off my dad because um, he loves helping children and that. Right, well this is uh, Lincolnshire's biggest firework and bonfire display held on the county showground. Given good weather like we've got tonight, there should be about 10,000 people here by 8 o'clock. Excellent. It's a great night, great atmosphere. What are you going to do at headline? I'm just walking around entertaining the multitudes with the juggling. There is nothing in my life I would have changed. In everything I've done, I've been ever so lucky to have done it, and I wouldn't change a single thing. <laughs> <laughs>